Hello, I'm Dr. John Cruz, and today I'm going to be taking an inside look at interoception. I'll be talking for about, so I'm going to be talking about interoception. I'll be talking for less than 20 minutes today. If you have questions while I'm talking, you can type them in. This will be also posted on Facebook afterwards and then sent over to YouTube. If you have questions, you can comment there as well. So my take home message is that interoception and interoception is the processing of sensations from within our body. Um, so that interoception is aberrant, not only in ADHD, but in a host of other psychiatric mental health conditions. And we are increasingly learning where those problems may be going on. And so I'm going to be highlighting one recent study about that and that this may give us insight as to new targets for treatment or a greater emphasis on treatment directions or targets that have been de-emphasized for ADHD or other conditions. So when we usually talk about ADHD, we talk about sort of cognitive processes, problems with attention, problems with distraction, problems with time management, and there's less emphasis so far on interoception, but people with ADHD are constantly missing cues that their bodies are giving them in ways that most people aren't, and that's leading to distress and dysfunction, both in those individuals and their lives. So what am I talking about? One is missing cues about how tired you are. I can't tell you how many times I've had people with ADHD come in and say, oh, I was up until 4 a.m. and I didn't realize until I looked at the clock how tired I was. So yes, there may be circadian clock differences, and there's previous talks on that, leading people with ADHD to have be night owls and to be up later, but a very common situation is sort of ignoring, they're not even constant with their late times. There's a variability, and part of the variability is getting too absorbed in the task at hand, but also the other piece of information, neglecting or getting less strong input as to what their bodies are telling them about how tired they are. The same thing with hunger. One of my best tip-offs at a new patient or someone I'm working with may have ADHD if they say, oh yeah, yesterday I was working and I didn't realize till four o'clock I hadn't had lunch all day. Now, some people intentionally skip lunch for dieting, dieting and other reasons. Some people you know, can be so crunched for time or make conscious decisions to skip lunch. But if someone tells me that it wasn't a conscious decision, they just sort of neglected it and then weren't aware until many, many hours later when they were quite hungry, that to me is often a tip off to be looking about or thinking about ADHD. Some other areas where problems with interoception may be leading to problems within a symptoms and issues we know people with ADHD have twice the rate of substance abuse problems, and some of that comes from um, discounting the, the implications of for the future of decisions now, but some of that is probably tied into even feeling less of the miserable, dysphoric, or unpleasant sensations connected with certain substance abuse experiences and being so wrapped up into the positive aspects that they are neglecting again interoceptive feedback. And another area that I've certainly noticed and others have commented on, <clears throat> clearly emotions can make people louder, or but often I've seen people with ADHD, including friends, um, who in public places are very anxious about something personal and private, but then are keeping talking at the top of their voice. And again, without any apparent awareness that this information that they're actually embarrassed about, that they want to keep private, they're shouting in a restaurant or a coffee shop or other place. Or um, similarly, people with ADHD are often very sensitive to other people tapping their pencils or their fingers or their feet, but are much less aware when they themselves are doing it and annoying other people. So clearly, there's a whole host of areas where apparent decreased interoceptive information is leading to problems for people with ADHD. And this is not a problem specific to ADHD. So interoception problems are there in a huge variety and some th people think that they're prevalent throughout all psychiatric conditions. 
So with anxiety, there may be heightened interoception, excessive awareness to certain bodily sensations. Certainly hypochondria is one, we don't call it that anymore, but where there's heightened cessation, heightened anxiety, heightened worry about things that turn out to be benign bodily processes. Depression involved, um, certainly eating disorders where people are getting mistaken information, not just from looking at um, you know, their, their image in a mirror, but also from what their body is telling them, the hunger single signals or lack of hunger signals. Schizophrenia has been a, a big part of our current explanations for delusions or hallucinations is that people are getting some signals from for visual hallucinations, it would be, or auditory from their auditory processing centers or cortex, their their um, vision. So they're sort of seeing things in their brain and they are misattributing where they are coming from. They're attributing it to the outside real entities rather than just messages from them within their brain. But at some level, that's a problem of interoception or not even perceiving that these internal cues, internal messages are really internal and attributing them to external status. Um, and as we mentioned, um, aspects of substance abuse problems may be tied to interception. Certainly panic attack is, is almost entirely, not entirely, hugely um, tied into interoceptive problems where someone's perceiving signals from their body are coming in and the body's saying, this is unusual, this is unusual, and then forms a cascade, this isn't just unusual, this is dangerous. You know, my heart's beating too hard, my stomach's gurgling, my hands are shaking or frozen in place, my vision's altered. That's a sign something's catastrophically wrong and often it's, no, it's just a sign my heart's elevated. So the recent study um, published in the American Journal of Psychiatry pinpoints the mid-insular cortex as a crucial area where interoceptive processing is apparently being activated in a host of mental health conditions. So they, it was a meta-analysis of different imaging studies, imaging studies for anxiety, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, and meta-analyses looking at one area that, that jumped out was the mid-insular cortex um, was apparently activated during these interoceptive, a variety of different interoceptive tasks in these conditions. So, so the insula is an area, it's a part of the cortex, but given the human brain is so convoluted and wrapped in upon itself, this is an area deep within the brain where the parietal temporal lobes are, are me meshing. It's sort of, if those sort of structures on the arms of the brain look, or, on the outside of the brain, the lobes sort of look like arms. This is sort of deep within the armpit of that is where the insula is. It's a poor description, but the best I can come up with. Um, so we've learned for a long time that the posterior insula, so back towards the back of the brain, is involved with processing ascending sensory input. So input coming in from your body of you know, temperature sensation, pain sensation, where your body's positioned, all sorts of ace arriving from the body of senses so that your body, so part of the posterior insula is integrating and coordinating a representation of what state your body is in. So that's, we've known it's been happening in the posterior insula. In the anterior insula, so towards more towards the front of the brain, um, we know it receives a lot of descending input both from cognitive um, centers in the brain and from affect or the emotional processing centers. And the anterior insula for a long time, we know has been a, known to be a site where an abstract representation of body states is. So sort of what your brain's expecting it to be or what it thinks it should be doing or what your emotional feelings are creating um, as sensations and experiences for what your body state is in. And again, we know um, studies of kids with ADHD that the anterior insula is overly activated when they're given distracting information. 
So with this most recent study, looked at a place that hasn't been studied as much before, and that's the mid-insula between the anterior and posterior. And again, it was the mid-insula area that jumped out as being disrupted in its activation. And currently, the, the, our understanding of looking at the wiring, where it's getting lots of input and output, is that it's getting input from both parts of that insula. So it's thought to be probably, we don't have definitive evidence, we need further studies, but it looks like where your body's integrating these two different sort of maps or sources of input, again, what your body is telling it and what your hopes, expectations, brain is thinking it should be. So that those are called the prediction errors and testing the mid-match, the mismatch of that is thought to be what's going on in that mid insular area. Um, so some of the other things this, addition, this meta-analysis of different studies looked at was that it was clearly not just you know, parts of the insula are involved in processing emotions. This mid-insula area seems distinct from just simply an emotion processing area. And it also seemed distinct from areas that are altered or changed when antidepressant drugs and antidepressant drugs are used in a variety of other conditions, including particularly strongly um, anxiety disorders. Um, we know they have impact on several areas of the brain, but this mid-insular area wasn't being affected by antidepressants. So that suggests it's an area in the brain that's intimately involved in interoception, in integrating different top-down and bottom-up information about what your body state is. And given that existing, at least antidepressant drugs, aren't affecting it, it's not just part of our emotional processing pathway, that suggests it itself could be a target for new or different interventions. And that, again, helping correct problems with interoception may lead to um, alleviation of at least some subsets of symptoms for different conditions. And, and some of this has been looked at, not in ADHD, but in, for example, anxiety disorders. We know training. So, so how do you improve interoception? So some of these um, involve sort of biofeedback processes. Some of them involve mindfulness training. Some involve breathing exercises. Um, so as, essentially, learning to pay attention to what your body's already doing, getting feedback about how well you are perceiving what's actually going on, and then going on to practice and improving how well you do with that. And there's been some studies that show people who have less um, awareness of what their body is doing tend to be more likely to get into anxiety problems and that, that's, that anxiety can be at least lessened if you train them in how to be more aware of their body. Um, and again, to my knowledge, and I did try to find a PubMed check, there was virtually nothing on interoceptive training or treatment approaches in ADHD. Um, but the uh, thought would be that if you can improve your body's awareness of what's going on and be more accurate in how you are processing that, be more aware of what's going on, what your body's trying to tell you, what you're really, listen to your heart, listen to your gut, you may be more effective at integrating information in your body and then acting on it. So parts of the insula, actually the anterior insula we know are also involved in um, decision-making and particularly conscious motivational decision or motivation. So conscious deciding, I'm going to go do that task. And again, that's another area where people with ADHD, you know, they may decide, yes, I should move the parked car because it's street sweeping day, or I should send in my tax form because it's due today or turn in my homework. But they neglect to do these emotionally um, important, or in their life important, but they're not registering enough to, to motivate a decision to actually execute on it. Um, so that's about all I'm going to say today. If you have questions, you can certainly type them, <clears throat> type them in. I'm not seeing any coming up right now. Next week's talk is going to be about stim stimulant medication and dosages of stimulant medication. And I will be signing off because I'm not seeing any questions. 
But again, you can post them later and I will get to them then. Um, have a healthy, happy week. And I will be talking next week, but two weeks from now, Thanksgiving Day, or the day after Thanksgiving, I will not be doing an appearance. So there'll be a gap then. But I'll be back next Friday at 11. That's all.